One of my absolute favorite things in the world to do is any sort of an adventure hunt. Somewhere where I haven't been before and on this trip to Newfoundland, well that's exactly the case. Now I'm heading up with Efforts Hunting Adventures and Bob Effort is going to be flying us in to a spike camp where nobody's been hunting for almost 20 years. Newfoundland is very unique, but you can have like four seasons in one day. We actually came in a day early, so that way we could get into the area, scout a little bit, and see what we had going. Look at all the game packs, see look. These fresh caribou, we just came down there last night. Like I said, we're just scouting around the day, but we don't want to spook them animals that we, we think they're there, right? So we just go up there now in this last round and hopefully make a plan for tomorrow. But we're gonna go over to the back side there. Now the moose are more in the tucky spruce and stuff like that. That's more like where they hang out. They will travel across the open distance to get to wooded areas, but at this time of the day, they may be laying down. So we're just looking for tips and yeah, right? we're Yeah, we're looking for tips and you come into a new area, well you gotta spend a little bit of time scouting and that time can really speed up your hunt later on. So I thought it was great that we were able to come in early, get that full day of scouting in. It's, uh, like I said, there's a fair amount of woods there. They're laying down in, right in that woods there now. There was a good sized bull there and there was a bigger one over there, right? So uh, well, They like to stay down in that where the caribou like to be up in this open. Space. Yeah, but it's midday too now, right? They're just laying down there. But, you know, they usually like to follow tree lines, but and this, this is kind of old country, and so we'll probably come back here in the morning, and uh, we're gonna, well, we're gonna wait around here the rest of the evening and see what we can see. I don't care where I'm rifle hunting across the world, the one thing you'll probably always see me with is a set of shooting sticks. Now these are the Bog Pod TAC 3s, and the reason I really like them is they're a little bit thicker, they're a little bit heavier, but they're all the more sturdy. Now when you're out here in Newfoundland, you may have chances at moose that are in thick cover. And frankly, I don't know if I'm gonna have a tree that's next to me that'll be solid enough or not. So I like to have my shooting sticks, I put them right on my pack, bring them along, and it really can make all the difference. I like to be rock solid. Now some of these adventure hunts, well they're not for everybody. You're in a spike camp. You don't have running water, you don't have showers, but to me it's the best kind of hunting. I love being out in the middle of the wilderness right amongst the animals. Literally, the second you get out of your cabin, you're already hunting. And to me there's something really cool about that. It's beautiful. You get up in the morning, you can open up the door and there's animals walking around. Uh, you can listen, it's a moose call or a bird chirp. It's quite unique and uh, I love it. Now our plan for that very first opening day morning was to get up high once again, hopefully spot these moose, and then make the plan. The difficult thing was gonna be, well in those trees, it is extremely thick. Nice moose medicine. Boy, so what do you think the plan's gonna be? I think right now he's right directly downwind of us, right? So I think what we'd have to do, we'd have to go down, Circle around, past that little lake, come up that little gully there, mm -hmm. and try to get up beyond it. Right now, we got the wind right straight at, and um, we're lucky you, you don't even smell us from here, right? But that's a great bull that is. That's wonderful. This segment was brought to you by U.S. Sportsman's Alliance. Our heritage, our fight, protecting hunting from coast to coast. Did you know that in 2005, the USSA and its partners stopped an animal cruelty bill that would have outlawed hunting in Texas? This is a state that ranks second nationwide in number of sportsmen and women with 2.71 million hunters and anglers who spend 4.1 billion annually and support over 65,000 jobs. Bottom line, don't mess with Texas. Just another fun fact showing how sportsmen and women are helping make a difference.
What do you think the plan's gonna be? I think what we'd have to do, we have to go down, circle around, pass that little lake, mm -hmm. try to get up beyond it. When you're up on these, these, these eye advantage points, sometimes you can see moose for quite a distance. So the positive thing about it is you know they're there. Behind that hill, there's a little small, a little ravine there just before you get. Mm -hmm. We could find a way there. We might be able to get a chance to get a shot. There were actually two moose okay. in that same location. I'm going to go right across that bog, we'll love it. Now with two big bulls right next to each other, well, we weren't sure which one was bigger, but at this point, I wasn't that concerned. I had the biggest one standing, I think. There's one right there. Hey, psst, 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 right here. Yeah. It was noisy getting through that thick timber. I just wanted to get down, get within range of these bulls. But we were making progress, and as we got closer and closer, we could still see those bulls. So we decided we're just gonna keep moving just nice and quietly through, and hopefully we could get in and cut them off. Well, we ended up spotting some cows, and we saw the perfect opportunity. There was a small funnel going back into the trees, and this looked like it was exactly where they were headed. Well, the cows started filtering through, and I knew that that bull hadn't been far up. Then we got a quick glimpse of the bull. But he was already past us and went into the thick trees. So we decided instead of busting those cows out, we were just gonna wait and then slowly sneak in. Now, as we did this, well, we got up close and there was the bull two huge paddles right in the thick brush and we were within a hundred yards. I could hardly believe it, but I was on my sticks and all I could see is his big old paddles and that hump. I don't think I can see his vitals through all that. There isn't much room at all. I couldn't see the vitals and I wasn't comfortable shooting through that brush. Not that the bullet wouldn't go through there, but it's so hard to get a good target when you're aiming into brush. And I just decided it was just too risky. This is a huge moose, and I figured this is his area. And I thought, you know what? Instead of rushing a shot, we're only on the first day of the hunt. I'm gonna let him go, and maybe I'll get a better shot. I'd rather let him walk than make a bad shot and regret. I just saw a couple of big moose there. One went, went, uh, went out the back door there. I guess we won't <laughs> get a shot at him. And the other one just went on further in the country, and he had three cows with him. So what we're gonna do, we're going to go down low there, stay on the bags, and we're going to try to get into that other area. And there's a fair bit of walking, and uh, but we're going to get, try to get in a word or two and then try to circle around again. Maybe well, we can get a look at them. It should be good because by the time we get around, we'll have the wind right back in our face and can kind of hunt our whole way home, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, then we can work right back to that camp, and we're eventually going to end up right up on top of that mountain again where we can look down the other side. Okay. <laughs> absolutely love calling. And Eddie said he's had great luck calling. In fact, I knew we had a chance. One of the things that can really help out in a situation like this is bringing the moose to you. Now after that first day, well, we had really had a lot of great stock. We had an excellent day, but the best part is, well, we had a good game plan for the following day. This segment was brought to you by Boss Buck. For the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market, choose Boss Buck Feeders. Now you're getting serious. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Cuddyback Digital.
hard-hitting Easton Arrows. Hunter's safety system. Winchester repeating arms. Swarovski optic. Send killer gold with hunt dry technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. U.S. Sportsman's Alliance, protecting hunting from coast to coast. And Golden Triangle Whitetail, your hunt of a lifetime awaits. Welcome back to Newfoundland. We're hunting the area near Deer Lake. Melissa and her guide have come across a couple nice bulls, but the brush prevented a good shot. At least now they know where the moose are. So we thought the next day we're going to have a great game plan. We're going to get up there. As soon as we spot one, we're going to drop down low, make a good path to them, and hopefully we could bring one of these moose right to us. So I think we have to set up right here. Uh, when we were on that mountain there yesterday, last day we were out, we saw him right over there with three cows. Well. So maybe still there, maybe back, but I think he could be there. So we're going to call the winners this way. And there's a lot of woods in front of him, so we just sit up right here and could come from anywhere, right? calling and trying to make it work. Well, all of a sudden, and we thought we heard something. Did you hear it? Ah, oh, it sounded like a branch or something. When you think you hear something, well, there's nothing else out here. It's probably something coming. So we ended up switching, moving all the way around 180 degrees, and we were set up. We could hear him just walking and walking. And the next thing I see are antler tips. And he just keeps coming and coming, and he's swaying, and he gets out there. <laughs> I cannot believe how close he came up there. Oh, he must have been 15 yards away. <laughs> that is awesome. That is great, Colin. Oh, they are so big, and when you see them at that range, I mean, I bet he was inside 20 yards. Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if I should shoot. I was trying to let oh. him clear and get that shoulder open, yeah. but oh, You had to shoot the wind of Lauren. I'm afraid Adam there, right? I so. know. I knew we didn't have much time. Oh, no, you made a good shot. Oh, there he is. Wow. 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 What a beautiful move. Look at the paddles on Look that. Look at the paddles on that fella, buddy. Wow. Oh my God. What a beautiful moose. This this has got to be the one that we had seen the other day, don't you think? Oh, for sure, for, for sure, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so Look at the size of the paddles. Oh man, oh man, he must have close to 30 points on that one. Oh my God. The other day when we could see him, that's all I could see, and I just didn't have the shot, but sometimes it's worth waiting, and this was a much better shot. I could see his entire body. Oh, yeah. Plus. I love calling, so <laughs> if I had two options on how to take a moose, well, there's no question. Calling no, would be what I would pick. Yeah. This is by far the biggest moose I have ever yeah. taken up here. Just beautiful, and it's super old. Yeah. And the cool thing is, I mean, when you've been chasing a moose for a couple days, that makes oh, it all it makes, the difference. It makes it all the difference. That for is sure. beautiful. Well, we've been up here in Newfoundland hunting with the Efforts Hunting Adventures, and it has just been an amazing trip. We've got an absolutely beautiful moose. This area has just been full of moose. We've seen moose, caribou, just had a great setup. We've had a wonderful guide. Eddie, this has been just a blast. I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you very much, Eddie. Yeah. It's been awesome. Beautiful moose. Well, I think we've got a little packing, but you know what? We're not all that far from camp. No, not too bad. would have been ideal but didn't have one on me and killed a moose we weren't going to go back to camp to get one so made what we had work and got it done.
But our success rate on these flying knots is, is well in excess of 90%, if not in excess of 95%. But normally every day you're going to see multiple, multiple uh, opportunities for a good trophy bull and a woodland caribou. When we come back, Melissa tries her hand at woodland caribou when Winchester's deadly passion returns. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews, catch us if you can. Field and stream, where traditions begin. Scoutlookweather.com, download the free Deer Log app for your smartphone. Moose Utility Division, demand the brand. Bog Pod, versatility defined. M&P by Smith & Wesson and Boss Buck for the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market. Now you're getting serious. Closed captioning is brought to you by the 4-in-1 Woodsman from Zippo Outdoor. To me, Newfoundland is one of the coolest places in the world to go because of the fact that you can come here and you can get not only a moose tag, but also a caribou tag and a bear if you happen to see one. So you can try to get your moose down first and then you have the opportunity for woodland caribou as well. I think, and I, I'm very confident when I say this, that the uh, opportunity that we offer is the best in the world for trophy woodland caribou, no question, no doubt. Now there's not very many places in the world that you can still take a woodland caribou and you can take an absolute giant here. They're quite unique. Their antler is sometimes this bigger mass than, than, than some of the caribou you get up maybe in Quebec. The things that you see out here, well you wouldn't be able to experience it anywhere else. Now the trick is going to be to try to find one, make a plan, get the wind in our favor. We're going to try to circle down, get into the wind. There's two or three stags there. Like I said, I don't know how big they are, but they're, I can see another one laying right there too, sure. right, right by the side there. Look. That other one's got to be pretty cool. Yeah. So we just angle around and try to get up some height. We were constantly moving. If you want to be successful, you got to be out there. Yeah. <sighs> that was way really to go. cool. Way to go. Boy, we've had him close. Yeah. <laughs> Shake and knock my whole hat right off. <laughs> he look, this is my first caribou I've yeah. ever shot. Yeah. Boy, that is cool. This is the nicest one we've seen for sure. Oh, it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice, dark. The, the coloration on him is really cool. It's kind of a tan with a black on them. Is that how they all look? Yeah, they pretty much, yeah. We've seen caribou, but we never saw anything like this come through yet, no. so they're always on the move. That's a good thing about caribou. You might have a whole new group in tomorrow, right? Yeah, that's right. Cool. Well, this has been just an awesome trip up here. I've had just a wonderful time. Got my very first ever caribou 
really pretty woodland caribou up here. We're up here with Efforts Hunting Adventures. We've got a wonderful little spike camp. Eddie's been just a phenomenal guide and we got on a lot of different caribou. Ended up seeing this one and made a good shot and put them down. And, well, I'm pretty excited. We're kind of a little ways from camp on this oh, one though. No, a little ways. <laughs> Although, if we're going to take one close, I'd rather take my moose close and the caribou a little further. <laughs> Follow Melissa on Twitter at Melissa Bachman and on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Winchester Deadly Passion for behind the scenes footage, photos, giveaways, and much more.